Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. You know the drill, we've been here since 2003, providing excellent technical analysis, trade ideas, uh, mechanical system trade alerts like you see here. We have our new KISS systems, which you should check out. We're going to be launching a major update to that soon, but let's go and get started here. Um, I just did a big extensive video yesterday on the weekend, so probably really don't need to do another video here, but we're just going to cover everything quickly. So it's Monday, December 4th, 2023, and this is our back-end recorder, which I'm going to get started now. Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Monday, December 4th newsletter. As you know, I just did the extensive weekend newsletter. Hope you all listened or watched that. And um, quite honestly, I mean, nothing really changed today. We're just going to Go over, tell you what happened, you know, reiterate some things. I did add quite a few trade ideas. Got a little typo here. So I added about a handful of setups to monitor and et cetera. But again, as far as the market, um, here's my comments from the weekend. Like I said, we've been looking for some consolidation in the market. We saw that today, at least in the S&P 500 and Qs. The S&P 500 was down about 30 points at one point before rallying off the lows. Um, and the NASDAQ was down 1%. However, no weakness for the Russell 2000 IWM, which closed up 1.1%. That area has been on a tear. Again, we've been seeing sector rotation. Remember, most of the year, the big cap tech is what has led a handful of stocks. The good thing is we're seeing other participation now, especially you know in a lot of these smaller names. And I think that the Qs are going to start to lag and as these other groups catch up, okay? And obviously we saw that today. Gold had a huge gap up overnight when the futures opened. Gold hit 2150. And by the way, I got a sh I shorted it there um, as I talked to our subscribers this morning about, I saw a little opportunity, which was actually pretty good. I had quite a few gold positions, so that was a nice hedge, but it pulled back 110 points to 2042. Again, it made a new all-time high there. Like I said, I'm super long. I'm bullish gold long-term, but again, that was quite extended. Now we're getting some pullback as the US dollar is moving up. Obviously, Bitcoin has been on an unreal tear, you know, as well as the Bitcoin-related stocks. You could just pick any of them. BITO, Mara, Coinbase, Riot, whatever. Um, again, there's not a lot of confidence in, you know, some of these other currencies, as you know. So Bitcoin's been on a tear. I think gold looks good. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what transpired today. Before we get into that, again, I'm just going to reiterate what I discussed on the weekend. Regarding the KISS systems, as I stated, if you haven't set those up, go to the systems section on the website, click on KISS STS tables. You'll see your various tabs up here. Remember, we follow 630 different instruments, stocks, ETFs. Um, set your favorites, but remember to check the email alerts. You got to go to the favorites tab on the upper right under the favorites. Again, it's only this check marks in the favorites tab. Click the receive alerts. We have You have to do that yourself. We can't do it for you because of the spam laws. So anyway, make sure to do that and you'll get... Automatic email alerts once a day whenever there's new changes to your favorites, such as a new entry, a new uh, STS smart trailing stop or an exit. You can also, you can see how nicely the positions have been in the KISS systems. If you've been following these, especially over the last month, easily paid for your membership many, many times over. Image number three, this shows you kind of an example of what your email will look like. Again, these are automated. They come shortly after the market closes. Again, this is the email from Friday, but I'm just using the same thing. So you'll get an email with a nice clean tab or table, and it'll show you the changes and updates to your systems, and you simply follow along. Next. Image number four just shows you some examples of some of these high-performance KISS systems um, with those nice smart trailing stops capturing a lot of these gains. And guys, that does it for that. Let's go ahead and move back to the newsletter. So here's the index sector table, what transpired today. You can see again, slight pullback on the indexes. the NASDAQ leading down, 
which is kind of what we expected. It led all year. As these other sectors start to play some catch up, we think that's going to lag. And um, you could see that with the Russell today up over 1%. So clearly that area is really benefiting. And uh, as far as the 21 market sectors we follow, kind of a 50-50 mixture of up and down. Again, nothing, no real big moves today. A lot of them are under 1%. Looks like the biggest move was technology down 1.2%. But again, small moves either way here, up or down. Currency-wise, U.S. dollar had a big bounce back today, up a half percent essentially. Remember, that hit a big support area, and uh, that's also been a reason for gold to pull back. Cryptocurrencies, like I said, been on fire. Bitcoin up another 5%. I think it hit 42000 at one point. And commodities, kind of a mixed bag here. Now, the index was down. DBC, 1.7%. Again, primarily because of the energy market, which continues to be weak, especially crude oil, down 1.4%. Natural gas continues to get nailed, down 4.25%. Copper pulled back nicely today. So commodities aren't generally to the downside. And, of course, precious metals all pulled back. Remember, they've had a really good run. So now they're consolidating. Okay, Not, No one should be surprised about that. As far as the bond market, 10-year, 30-year were up while the bonds were down. Item number six shows the economic news calendar. As I stated, uh, today we had factory orders. And tomorrow, the 5th, we have ISM and um, PMI. So those will be looked at, obviously. Crude oil inventories on see Wednesday gonna see how the crude oil market reacts to that and of course we have the big non-farm job pay report on Friday I think the market's gonna be paying attention to that as well let's jump to the charts image number seven here's that monthly view of TLT 20-year bonds again I just discussed on the weekend like I said the reason the markets has had a heck of a rally from the late October lows is from four factors Number one, we were calling for a major bottom in bonds and a pullback in interest rates. You know, I had a clear five wave move down on TLT here in a demand zone with positive divergence on the MACD and RSI. And clearly this is playing out. That's helped the market. We had bearish sentiment at the lows. You know, the market's convinced the Fed is done. Um, all kinds of stuff. But and, of course, you know, end of year rally, sentiment, stuff like that. Now, sentiment calls for some weakness in early in early December, and we saw that today on, you know, the S&P and Qs. Trevor 8, here's the daily view of the indexes. Again, the Dow and IWM have been on a tear. You can see the Dow's up in its upper Bollinger Bands. The s and still hanging on to its 9 EMA there. Now, the Qs, like I said, they've been lagging. They're leaking oil a little bit below their 9 EMA. They're at their middle Bollinger Bands, 20-day moving averages. That's an area to monitor. And, of course, Russell at the bottom, closing above its upper Bollinger Bands. Next, image number nine, here's the Dow. Again, both the Dow and the Russell especially have really played a lot of catch-up. Chart 10, here's the IWM small caps. Again, they were up 1.1% today, where the other major indexes were down. Again, hell of a rally. Nice move in this sector. This sector, tends the small caps tend to do well late in the year anyway, but they're also playing catch up, like I said, because they lagged all year. Clearly, that inverse head and shoulder pattern playing out. Chart 11, here's the monthly chart. Again, beautiful rally off that big support last month. And this month, it's already up 4% in December. Chapter 12, moving on to the S&P 500, our proxy. Here's the weekly view of the S&P. Like I said, it came right into this supply zone, little resistance area to monitor. Again, I do think the all-time highs will be tested ultimately, but this is an area to pause perhaps for a little bit. Chapter 13, here's the daily view. Again, basically tested those July highs, little double top area. Here's a little support zone. Again, your current support's this 9 EMA, right? Losing that, then you have the 20-day. There's an open gap down here. Remains to be seen if we get if we pull back that much that we're looking for, you know, this early December. Do we really pull back all the way to fill this open gap? It's possible that we just get more of a shallow pullback here, more of a range bound. Um, 
you know, if we lose the nine, like I said, I could see tag, tag in the 20. And then I think we get the, our Santa Claus rally after. Chapter 14, here's the equal weighted index. Again, you can see how a lot of this has been coming back nicely, which has lagged all year. It's into this next supply zone a bit. There is no divergence up here. So, you know, it may just consolidate and then rally again. Chapter 15, here's the KISS system. Again, really no changes. The smart trailing stop here remains at 448. Next, chapter 16, here's the four time frames we like to follow. So we hold the ATR still on the half day and the 130 minute. Remember on the weekend, I talked about this 78 minute. I said prices started to follow the cycles. You can see the support cycle, resistance cycle, support cycle, and we Pulled, we rallied all the way to a resistance cycle, and I said, watch that. It's probably a logical area to pull back, and that's what happened today. Now, we're still holding the ATR, but we pulled back from there. To me, this could be some sort of like ABC where this is an A down, you get a B up, and maybe one more, more C down, and maybe that will complete our correction. Assuming it's a shallow correction. Chapter 17, here's the 60-minute view. Again, we're still holding this little tight channel. You know, we've had a hell of a rally since the late October lows, all these open gaps, breath thrust, you know, et cetera. Um, we're still holding the channel. This is your symmetry right around 50, 51 points. That is yet to be broken. Finally, Trevor 18, here's the 15-minute chart I discussed on the weekend, this little channel. And um, you could see at least today we pulled all the way back to the channel line. We bounced right off of it. So if you're short, that was an area to take some profits. Now we got an open gap here. So we'll see, you know, do we form a, like I said, do we form a lower high here then come down again, as I discussed in my last uh, chart. Moving on to the triple Qs. Here's the Qs pulling back, little doji candle bouncing near that, um, 20-day moving average, that's your current support. Remember, we're below the 9 EMA now. Um, if we lose this, then you've got an open gap here that could be a little target. Some RSI divergence there at the highs. Again, like I said, this area has had a hell of a run. This may lag a little bit, some of the other things that play catch up. Trevor 20, here's the half-day chart. Again, into this little supply or demand zone. Otherwise, you have this open gap below in the shaded area if this is lost. Moving on, Chapter 22, here's uh, the Q's KISS system. Again, no changes here. Well, on Friday, we had that new smart trailing stop. It's covered up here a little bit, but it's 373.40. Obviously, a really nice long entry there, basically on November 1st, just a couple days off the lows. Excellent entry. You know, really nice trades in the KISS system this year. Yes, the last one was a loser there, but you know, that's how these trend systems are. They'll catch a big winner, and then I'll have a little whipsaw, and they'll catch a nice winner. The beauty about the KISS systems is you always have peace of mind because you have your stops, your protection, and that is adjusted over time. You know, we have all these mean reversion systems on the website, the 21 mean reversion systems, and they work great, high winning percentages. But they are emotionally tough to trade because, you know, they're buying into strong pullbacks and they don't use stops initially. And you're always concerned, well, what if this time you have the real rug pull? That's the nice thing about the KISS systems is they always have that stop, you know, exit plan. Image number 23, here's the four time frames. Again, Q's have been pulling back a little more than the other indexes lately. ATR is still pretty wide on the daily. We're right at it on the half day. Now, the other time frames, we've lost it, you can see. And you can see on the 78 minute, just like on the S&P, you know, we lost that and the ATR has been resistance. And you can see we stalled right at that end of bull cycle. That does it for the indexes, guys. Let's look at a few of these indicators. Chapter 24, here's the VIX. Again, I pointed out this support area. We are attempting to bounce. The bounce today for now stalled at this middle Bollinger Band. Okay. Again, as I pointed out, the RSI 5 divergence on the weekend. Driver 25, here's the VIX and the VVIX. We've, as we've been pointing out, Bollinger Bands, that we're starting to pinch on the VVIX, that's the volatility of the VIX.
Sometimes you get an earlier signal on the VVIX. Chapter 26, here's the S&P 500 versus the inverse VIX. I made this chart today, nice clean chart. And where you what you want to look for this is divergences. So especially when you have a positive or a, or a negative divergence relative to the indicator or the S&P. You could see the divergence here you had back in July that led to a nice correction. And you had a divergence here recently leading to at least a little pullback today so far. Also, you get a positive divergence at the lows in October. So this is a useful chart going forward. Remember, we give you our live chart URLs so you can bookmark them in your browser or save them in the stock charts. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Chapter 27, here's the other thing I've been showing, the NYSI system. Again, really nice long trigger back there in early November. You can see all the trades this year. Excellent, very simple little EMA crossover system. Chapter 28, here's the NASDAQ McClellan summation, two, e, two and five EMA crossover system. Again, also great signals. Like I said, guys, we give the live chart URLs. I get this question a while, every quite a bit. So whenever you pull up the newsletters, remember each chart has a number by it. And next to the chart, again, on the upper left, you'll see view live chart. All you got to do is click on that. You'll pull up the live chart for this. You can save it in your, you know, you can bookmark it in your browser. You can save it in your stockcharts.com if you have one. And then check, you know, anytime you want what it looks like. You know, this is just a static image here. But the nice thing is that since we give you the live chart URLs, you can look at it two days from now, a week from now, a month from now. No other service really does that. So that's a huge benefit if you're also just watching us on YouTube. Our standard web page newsletters all have the live chart URL. So hopefully that's clear now, guys. Again, very easy to pull those up. Just click view live chart. Trevor 30, here's the NYAD advanced decline. Remember, I pointed out on a weekend it was outside its upper Bollinger Band, a little overbought, and we did get a little pullback today on the S&P. Finally, Trevor 31, the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 above their 20-day uh, moving average. Again, they were in, in an overbought territory, up here at 90-something percent. And there is a little divergence here, you can see. So everything lining up there for that maybe early December weakness. Moving to bonds, Trevor 32, high yield corporate pullback today, basically an inside day. Obviously, this sector has been very strong. Remember, this, the market tends to follow high yield corporate. Just overlay a chart of S&P over HYG and you'll see how they trade lockstep with each other pretty much. Chapter 33, there's the two hour view. So far it's been an impulsive move up. Chapter 34, here's the 10 year treasury yield. Again, was up today. It's had a heck of a sell off since the October highs. Remember that's when we thought that a Pretty good top had been put in in rates and a bottom in TLT on that monthly chart, which I showed. Anyway, basically in between the 50 and 38% FIB. Little bounce today. Here I added a trend line in the RSI 14. Breaking that, maybe this will start a bounce. But again, I think any good rally on this should form a lower high. Okay, I'm not looking for this to, you know, if it bounces here, I'm not looking for it to... Um, do anything like this. You know, I think if, if anything, some sort of lower high and then it's going to come down again. All right. Let's see. Next. Look, zooming down to a shorter time frame. Here's a 60 minute chart of the 10 year TNX. You do have a little MACD divergence here that could support a little bounce, but again, we'll see. It's still in this little channel. And Chapter 36, there's TLT 20 year bonds, obviously, essentially the inverse of the TNX. Next, following up on a few of these sectors, we're only going to look at a few of them. Here's XLK technology. You can see tagged as 20 day moving average, bounced off of it today. As you'd expect, that's your first support. Again, as I keep reiterating, two stocks make up almost 50% of this damn thing. So, you know, it's almost pointless. I hate these huge weightings that some of these stocks have. I think that really causes problems at times. 
Chapter 38, Jets, Airlines ETF. Man, this thing has been on fire. Up another 4.3% today. You know, just uptrending beautifully. Remember, we I was stalking this thing back in September and October for a bottom. We got a trigger there in early November, right off that little, inside the pattern actually, right on over that little trend line. Even if you waited to buy it, even if you waited for a confirmation to break out of the channel, you're still doing extremely well on a swing trade basis. Like I said, if you're still long, the simple method is set your stops at the higher lows. So your initial stop would have been here, then you moved it up to this higher low, then you move it up to here. You know, you might have been to move it up to 50% of that candle. So that's kind of a stop progression uh, you could consider. Next, Trevor 39, Banks. They followed through a little bit. They've been looking really good. Nice on a longer term double bottom here. Trevor 40, here's KBE. That's the bank ETF. That's the long idea I gave in the bank sector over the weekend. Again, a lot of the individual bank stocks look the same. So I thought it was easier just to do the ETF. Up one and a quarter percent today. Nice follow through. Trevor 41, financials. They were up, but off the highs now a little bit. Chapter 42, home builders also, they made a new high. Home builders and real estate been rallying up since that pullback in rates. Chapter 43, retail, Re really nice move off those October, November lows up again today. Chapter 44, biotech just continues on a tear as well. Biotech, remember a lot of biotech dominate the small caps. Remember, the small caps are really rallying, and we're seeing this in biotech too. So up again, closing above its 200-day moving average. Remember, our long trigger was back here, November 13th, off these dojis. Even if you bought that gap, you've done very well. Chapter 45, here's LABU. That's the triple leverage ETF. You know, I've been saying it has a nice little rounded un umbrella bottom, and it's been moving up nicely. Chapter 46, XLE Energy, again with crude oil weakening, this area has been lagging, but it's holding up pretty good considering the sell-off in crude oil. By the way, the KISS system is flat here, so it is not long. Chapter 47, Emerging Markets down today, could be forming a pennant if it holds this 20-day moving average. And let's move to commodities. Chapter 48, DBC, this is the weekly, again, you know, commodities have been pulling back since essentially uh, September. It's basically right on its 200-week moving average. The last time it found support there, middle of the year. We'll see if it can hold that or not. Chapter 49, crude oil, again, continues to be weak. Had that little double top there. That slanted head and shoulder pattern obviously playing out that we had pointed out. There's a big demand zone down here. I wouldn't be surprised if crude oil ends up down in this range. I heard the Biden administration are going to look to replenish some of the strategic oil reserves that they, you know, stupidly sold to for political reasons to try to force gas prices down five or ten cents. But, you know, they really need to be buying down in this range because that's an opportunity. And things like strategic oil reserves are for emergencies, right? If an asteroid hits, we lose power every, in the whole country. You need crude oil. You don't want to sell it for a political, anyway. The website, this website, we stay away from politics, but so, but you get the point. Anyway, wouldn't be surprised to see crude oil down in this range. Chapter 50, natural gas continues to leak oil. Remember, it broke that channel last week. Down again today, down four and a quarter percent. Chapter 51, copper pulling back after breaking out. But now this tr broken trend line, watch for that to be a support. So if it pulls back to this area, you may be able to get a good buy opportunity there. I think this is one of the ETFs you might want to check and you can look at some of the copper stocks themselves. Charber 50, moving on to Charber 52 Bitcoin, like I said, just continues to power up. Huge move on the weekend. You know, I could say it's getting overbought, but I mean, it's, you know, this thing can just can do crazy stuff. We liked it back here in October as a long, and that's had a nice move. Now, there's still technically a MACD divergence here. MACD is not taking out the highs. But again, that's why if you see divergence, you don't just, divergence itself is not a sell signal, guys. You need a trigger. 
And divergence can be negated, but it is still there, so just be aware of that. Chart 53, here's the weekly view. So Bitcoin now tagging its 50% Fib retracement. Wouldn't be surprised if it makes it up to the 61.8 over time. Remember, last year we pointed out that obvious five-wave completion, and that was a great area to go long, quite honestly. Following up on some of the individual stocks, here's Mara. Again, all these things had great days. Big old gap up. You know, don't fault yourself if you took some profits. Heck of a move from this. This has been on the watch list since it was in that coil. Jabra 55, coin-based. Again, up again as well. You do have a little divergence up here on the RSI. You have some of these doji candles, um, gaps. That is something to definitely be aware of, guys, because if we get a reversal tomorrow, that could set up a bearish evening star pattern, you know, kind of like an exhaustion. So be aware of that. This is not a place to chase this stuff. Chapter 56, Riot, that's been on the list as well. Another nice move, gapped up. And finally, Chapter 57, Hive. Now, this one actually looks pretty good. This one's not extended like the others. Broke out of this channel today on expanding volume. Pull back, found support at the channel. So this one, to me, you know, looks decent as it's not extended. Moving on. Chapter 58, U.S. dollar, up today. Um, it was up today about a quarter, I think about a, a half percent. Anyway, logical bounce off that 61.8 fib. Finally, we're seeing a pullback in the precious metals. Chapter 59, here's U.S. dollar on the weekly. Quite honestly, the U.S. dollar on the weekly doesn't look bad. It's pulled all the way back. In fact, if you extend this trend line over, you can see we tagged it, bounced off of it. Stochastic's oversold. Moving average ribbon, pinching from a bullish configuration. So, you know, could be an area for the dollar to rally more. Chapter 60, uh, Japanese yen. I discussed this on the weekend. Again, you had a pretty perfect double bottom down there. And Chapter 61, the euro, FXY, it's a way to play it. Same look. Moving to precious metals. Driver 62, gold. Again, guys, look at this sucker. Again, as I said, on Sunday night, I saw this thing spike up to 2150, where I shorted the futures. Um, and I uh, should have shorted a lot more. And then the thing from 2150 hit a low of 2038. So down 112 points. Unbelievable. Very extended. You know, this now, it may need a little more consolidation. Again, I love this long, I like this long term, but it may need to now consolidate some of these gains. Again, it did make a new all-time high. Never achieved that before. Trevor 63, there's the weekly. Like I said, um, we had that triple top resistance. I said, you know, if we tagged it, we would likely go through it. And we did, but then we pulled back. Now, watching for a consolidation. Chapter 64, silver. Likewise, uh, can, nice pullback in this. Watch for this broken trend line to now potentially act as support. Chapter 65, here's the weekly view of silver. And uh, again, watch for this. As you know, broke out of this coil. Watch for the broken trend line of the coil to be support. And Charber 66, there's the monthly view, kind of monitoring this bigger coil pattern. We close slightly back inside it today. Charber 67, GDX. Again, we've been pointing out the higher low inverse head and shoulder pattern. We've had a heck of a rally. There's no divergence on the daily chart, but we got extended. This area, which was kind of a neckline, sort of, is now a support zone. So if we lose this 90 MA, then this area would be an area to watch for big support. Smaller time frames. Here's the two hour view. Still holding this trend line on the GDX GLD ratio. That's your friend. We're still holding that. We did have an MACD divergence there at the highs last week. So um, that's playing out a bit. Driver 69, here's the 60 minute view. Again, you can clearly see that strong MACD divergence we had on Friday's close. Nice pullback today. Here's the pullbacks since that November bottom. 
October bottom. So pull back about a buck 18 off the highs, slightly more than the last one. Is that a symmetry break? Hard to say. I mean, you know, the one option I could see is if it bounces here, a lower high. Notice there's a gap, then we come down again, and then maybe we get a better bottom in there than up. So kind of needs to digest some of these gains. Trevor 70, GDXJ, again, pulling back as well. We have a wave three up or a wave C, okay? If it's a wave C, then we're gonna enter a deeper consolidation correction. If it's a wave three, then we're just gonna have some sort of wave four pullback and then up again. Following up on some of the individual names, Chopper 71, FSM, again, these are all pulling back, but they've had a heck of swing runs since we've had them on our watch list. So hopefully you guys have participated, partake and take some profits. Chopper 72, WPM, again, it's been an excellent trade. Bounced off its 9 EMA for now. Remember guys, in strong trends, your 9 EMA is always your first support. Chopper 73, AEM, again, very similar look to the GDX, this inverse head and shoulder pattern. This one's still quite strong, but again, remember 9 EMA is your support on all these. And the final one, Charber 74, GOLD, same thing. And uh, let's move on to our other trade ideas. So Charber 75, CKPT, been on the list for a few weeks, inverse head and shoulder pattern. Man, this thing continues to go. I'm not in the stock anymore. I got out, but I got out last week and it just continues to be strong. Look at the volume bars as I've been pointing out. Just super strong. This is one to watch, guys. On a consolidation, it'll likely form a bull flag for another entry. Trevor 76, BYON, Beyond. It's been on the list last week. Nice move out of that base. Again, a lot of these smaller stocks have been playing catch up, as you can see. Chopper 77, Massey, which has been on a list for at least a few weeks now out of this horizontal rectangle. I've had a target of 100. That was more than achieved today. So make sure you've locked in some gains. My style, I'll, I'll sell half at least. If I want to keep the rest, I'll just trail the stops higher. Chopper 78, VSCO was a hell of a swing trade off of this uh, 20 resistance. A little pullback today, but looks fine overall. Chopper 79, Airbnb, which had a huge pop for us last week, was up today pulling back. But otherwise, if it ends up achieving its measured move, it measures up to around 142. Chopper 80, here's the 60-minute chart. Remember, I showed this last week, this coil. You had an extremely low risk long at this bottom of this coil with a tight stop. As I discussed on the week in my soapbox, Trading is not about knowing exactly what's going to happen. You know, I have people say, you know, you say if this, this could happen or that can happen. So you don't know what you're talking about. No, trading is about, first off, we can have our biases. And I'll tell you, our bias is usually correct. Not all the time, obviously, but trading is not about that. It's about identifying areas of importance. Like you're here at this trend line. You can go long. Put a very tight stop below there. If you're wrong, you lose very little. You know, if you break that, then you can go short. And this would have been, a, the target would have been this open gap. So that's what trading is about, is identifying where you can take low risk trades with tight stops and good reward. Okay, that's all trading is, guys. It's not about having a crystal ball. Now, right now, it looks like a flag setting up. So I think this could still run higher. Remember, its major move is still up a bit. And Charber 81 run, continues to run, but off the highs today a little bit. Charber 82 TCNs worked out beautifully, bounced off that 9 EMA, as you can see. Charber 83 NRDS was on the watch list last week, had a nice pop on Friday off that trend line. Hopefully he took a little profits. It gave a lot back today. It's still holding in there though. And let's look at some new setups. So here's some new setups, guys. AI, so chat GPT, essentially. We had it as a long idea back here in early November. And you now got a new coil setting up. Jabra 85, BBAI, it's another kind of an AI type company. Kind of a reason I'm showing it here because you have an obvious three wave down move. 
Remember, in uptrends, you look to buy three-wave pullbacks. Driver 86, American Airlines. Again, you know, the if you're long jets already, you don't need this, but airlines have been doing good, and this could still potentially follow through. Good volume. Target would be up around 14. That fills that gap. Driver 87, EGHT, another new one. Nice coil pattern. If it can break out, target would be up here around four. Again, doesn't mean it gets there, but it's a potential target. Driver 88, AMRX, breakout idea long, obviously, over resistance. Driver 89, ATHA, nice little horizontal rectangle base. Good volume coming into it today. So, you know, long trigger would be up over around this 175 area. Or, you know, if you tried it early, you could have a stop below the lows. The um, This would measure up to about the 220 area, perhaps. All right, guys, that'll do it. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. Quick check on futures. ES futures are down eight points tonight. So some weakness. <laughs> Apologize. Anyway, have a wonderful evening. Thanks for all your support. Consider subscribing if you're just on YouTube and take care.